Chapter 11, Discovery. Shortly after the Titanic sank, people became interested in salvaging or recovering the sunken ship. There were two problems. First, no one knew exactly where the ship had sunk. After Titanic sent its final distress signal, the ship drifted with the ocean currents. The search area was over 100 miles wide. The ocean in this area was two and a half miles deep. Second, even if the ship could be located, how could it be recovered? There were some crazy ideas. One was to fill the boat with ping pong balls and float it to the surface. A Denver inventor published a plan to raise the Titanic using a submarine and powerful magnets. By the 1980s, undersea technology had advanced to the point where locating a ship, even one so far below the surface, was possible. Robert Ballard, an American underwater archaeologist, had dreamed of finding the Titanic for years. He figured out what kind of vehicle might be able to locate the Titanic, and he developed a submersible called Argo. Argo was 15 feet long and about three and a half feet high and wide. It was unmanned, meaning there would be no people inside. Argo was equipped with floodlights, video cameras, and a sonar system. Sonar uses sound waves to locate underwater objects. Once underwater, Argo was controlled by people on a boat above water. Argo could take pictures and send them back to the surface. <clears throat> Robert Ballard. Robert Ballard is one of the best known deep sea explorers. Born in 1942, Ballard grew up in San Diego, California. From an early age, he was interested in underwater exploration. Ballard worked as an oceanographer for the U.S. Navy. He researched different technologies and developed a robotic vehicle to search for the Titanic underwater. In 1985, he put his invention to the test. Although Ballard had explored many other shipwrecks, he is most well known for his discovery of the Titanic. In 1985, Ballard put together a team to find the wreck of the Titanic. American and French research scientists joined a ship called the Knorr, which searched the Atlantic for six weeks, but nothing turned up. The team was losing hope. Then, just after midnight on September 1st, 1985, Argo detected something odd. Small chunks of metal located at a depth of 12,500 feet, about two miles. On the NOR, the team studied the video screens. These metal chunks looked human-made. Argo continued to send up images. Soon it located something enormous and circular. Could this be one of Titanic's boilers? The team quickly checked an old photograph from 1911. It looked exactly the same. They cheered, they had found the Titanic. Ballard and his team were thrilled, but their celebration took place at the spot where hundreds of people had lost their lives. A memorial service was held for all those who had died. The next day, Ballard sent Argo underwater again. This time, Argo located the bow of the ship. The steel was dark black and covered in rust. It looked like a skeleton of the once grand ship. Argo found the stern lying nearly 2,000 feet away from the bow. This was an important discovery. People had not been sure whether the Titanic had sunk in one piece or had broken in two. Argo solved that mystery. The Titanic had split in half. People had also believed that the iceberg tore a 300-foot gash in the side of the hull. Seeing the hull showed that was not true. There was no tear. The rivets had popped open under the pressure of hitting the iceberg. The next summer, Ballard got ready for another trip to the wreck, and he planned to see it for himself. This time, he would get into a tiny submarine called Alvin, and go over 12,000 feet underwater. Ballard stepped into Alvin with his handheld video camera. It took him two and a half hours to travel from the surface to the wreck. He would go on 11 dives in total. So what did Ballard discover? Thousands of objects were found lying around the stern. They included portholes, dishes, and even a bathtub. 
Ballard did not take anything. He thought a gravesite should be left alone. Instead, he and his team left two plaques. One was in memory of all who died. The other asked all future explorers to leave the ship in peace. In memory of those souls who perished with the Titanic, April 14th, 15th, 1912, dedicated to William H. Tantum IV, whose dream to find the Titanic has been realized by Dr. Robert D. Ballard, the officers and members of the Titanic Historical Society, 1986. The plaque didn't stop professional treasure hunters in future explorations. Items from the Titanic were worth a lot of money. Some of the recovered artifacts included jewelry and luggage. A cherub statue from the Grand Staircase was found. A toy doll's porcelain head was found half buried in the sea floor. Can the Titanic be raised? No, it's too fragile to move. Scientists have discovered that it is slowly being eaten by bacteria. The bacteria have created rusticles, long icicle-like structures made of rust. Some experts believe that the wreck will turn into dust within 50 years. There will be nothing left of the Titanic. <clears throat> Titanic mania. Even right after the disaster, the world wanted to know every detail about the tragic maiden voyage. Newspapers and magazines printed special editions just days after the ship sank. The first movie about the Titanic came out just one month later. It was called Saved from the Titanic. Actress Dorothy Gibson starred in the movie. She had actually been a first class passenger. In the movie, she wore the same clothes she had worn on the Titanic. A Night to Remember is one of the most popular books written about the disaster. The author, Walter Lord, interviewed over 60 survivors for his book. In 1958, the book was turned into a movie. The movie sets were made from actual Titanic blueprints. The most expensive movie ever made about the disaster was the 1997 film Titanic. It cost $200 million to make. Director James Cameron made a giant model ship. It was nearly the same size as the actual Titanic. The team used a 17 million gallon water tank to film the sinking. The expensive price tag wound up not being a big deal. The movie earned more than $2 billion worldwide. In 2017, workers in China started building a full-size replica of the Titanic, 882 and a half feet long. Visitors will be able to eat on the ship and stay overnight. Luckily, there will be no chance of icebergs. The ship will stay docked in a reservoir.